you would remain standing, grab your Bibles, 1 Kings chapter 17, verse 17. I, this week and next week, we'll be finished this mini-series on when your rivers run dry. And so 1 Kings chapter 17, the 17th verse, we find these words. Now it happened after these things that the son of the woman who owned the house became sick. And his sickness was so serious, that there was no breath left in him. So she said to Elijah, what have I to do with you, O man of God? Have you come to bring my sin to remembrance and to kill my son? And he said to her, give me your son. So he took him out of her arms and carried him to the upper room where he was staying, laid him on his own bed. And then he cried out to the Lord and said, oh, Lord, my God, have you also brought tragedy on the widow with whom I lodged by killing her son? And he stretched himself out on the child three times, cried out to the Lord and said, oh, Lord, my God, I pray let this child's soul come back to him. And then the Lord heard the voice of Elijah and the soul of the child came back to him and he revived and Elijah took the child and brought him down from the upper room into the house, gave him to his mother. And Elijah said, see, your son lives. And then the woman said to Elijah, now by this I know that you are a man of God, that the word of the Lord in your mouth is the truth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at somebody real quick before you take your seat. Look at somebody too. Tell them, neighbor, my faith is getting stronger. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to tag this text. Take your seats in the presence of the Lord. I want to tag this text. My faith is getting stronger. I want to encourage someone this third Sunday in Mental Health Awareness Month, I want to encourage someone that regardless of whatever you might be going through, I want to encourage you to know this reality, that God is at work in your life. I want you to be confident that when I don't understand it, I don't like it, I don't approve of it, I don't agree with it, that God is aware and at work in your life. Y'all, I'm, if we didn't sleep on it, Elijah is teaching us a lot about our relationship with God. Elijah, if you didn't miss it, taught us that God will find you. Pastor, what do you mean by that? Elijah is only somebody because God tagged him. Because God found him. Can I give somebody something to shout about or at least express appreciation to God about? There's a whole lot of somebodies with your giftedness. There's a whole lot of somebodies with your talent and with your ability. The reason you are where you are is because God decided to find you. And we see just like Elijah, God has found us. Look at your neighbor, tell him God found you. But we also learn from Elijah that God doesn't just find you, don't shout too loud, God will feed you. <laughs> that, that when you're at your moment of lack, God will provide. Whether I'm lacking water, God will provide. Whether I'm lacking food, God will provide. So we found that God will find you. We taught us that God will feed you. And in our text today, he's going to teach us that God will form you. Let me tell you about how God works real fast, family. See, God, first of all, births you. But after he births you, he breaks you. This is where somebody's living right now. Because you're wondering, how can a God, Miss Gwen, that loves me so much, allow me to go through so much? How can a God who I know has all power and all strength allow me, Mike, to experience this? Stay close. Because after God births you he breaks you but after he breaks you he blesses you 
Anybody here ever gone through a season of being distraught and broken? But if you hung in there long enough to trust God in the process, you'll find that in the midst of that, God still blessed me. I want to draw somebody closer. Don't be dismayed when you go through because I can't reign with him if I don't suffer with him. And I'm learning that if I go through a squeeze in life, it's because God has something better in store for my life. Somebody shout better is in store. So God will birth you and then he will break you so he can bless you. But I'm not done yet. So he can blossom you. So that after God blesses you, he blesses you enough to expand your territory, to use you in a way you have never been used before. And the reason some of you are not blossoming yet is because you have not been broken yet. But when you get broken, come on, Elijah testified, God will allow you to go through some hardship in life. Because I understand this family, understand this, understand this. I am not molded in my victories. I am molded in the valley of tribulation. Preach Pastor James Gale. Yeah. See, a wild horse, that's what we like, wild horses. Until it gets broken, it kicks. Until it gets broken, it bites. Until it gets broken, it pitches fits. Until it gets broken, it snorts. Uh, until it gets broken, it runs aimlessly without a destination. And then the moment it gets broken, suddenly it has purpose and definition and destination and direction in its life. Family, if you're in a storm, don't be dismayed. He is the master of the sea. If you're in the trial of a valley, he is the lily of the valley. If you're, if you're in dwelling in dark hills of depression, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, he is still with me. Today's message is about how God forms our faith. Because a faith that is untested and a faith that is untried is not faith at all. And so Isaiah and this woman, widow woman, teaches us three things that I want to leave with us. Here's the first thing that I want us to grab a hold of. In order for God to do what he's going to ultimately do in my life, and meaning in order for my faith to get stronger... Here's number one. There's going to be a required trial. I know it's hard to say amen to that. This is going to help you get out of your depression. God is not mad at you. God is not trying to hurt you. God, I'm going to preach this in a moment. He's not trying to get even with you. Because you do know if God was trying to get you, you would have been gotten. God is not punishing you. I go through what I go through, Mel, because I can't get to the place of God fully using me unless I go through a required, necessary time of trial and struggle. You can't pass the, ex you can't pass the class without an exam. See, y'all do realize church and Bible study is the lecture. With my. But after you see, y'all think this is a three credit class with my college students. See, y'all, church service is three credits, Bible study is three credits. But Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday is lab, and that's also three credits. And when you go through the lecture lab, you don't always have your Bible on your hip. You got to prove that you learned the material in the classroom. And so God sometimes will let you go through sickness to say, let me see what you learn. He'll let folk betray you. Let me see what you learn. He'll let folk abandon you. Let me see what you learn. Is there anybody here that knows he who has begun a good work in me is going to complete it? And so I'm just going through a laboratory right now. 
See, some of y'all claim faith, let's see. Some of you claim love of God, let's see. Some of us claim God is really, I'm really on God's side. God will let you go through. This is a required trial. Verses 17 and 18 in the text. Her son became sick. Don't. Um, they about to die. Stay close. God uses the prophets. They work as a team. Now they're alive. But suddenly, soon as they get to experience what God is doing, suddenly somebody grabbed it. The boy became sick. And he didn't just get sick for a season. He got sicker quick. See, sometimes God will let some stuff happen and you don't even get enough warning to put yourself together. But you got to make up in your mind right then on the spot. And so this text in the Hebrew says this boy goes through an extreme moment of pain and hurting. Y'all, life has a way of taking us all by surprise. Do I have anybody in the room on East City campus where you chugging along, everything is looking all right, and then boom, out of nowhere, you are having to deal with something that you never thought. You thought the marriage was good, and the joke of this didn't show back up at home anymore. You thought everything was fine with your child, and you looked up, and you're getting a phone call from the sheriff. You thought every, you were feeling healthy, and then you had a little pain in your side. So you went to the doctor, and they told you to sit down, because I got something to share. See, life has a way of taking Taking you by surprise, but I'm here to tell somebody, keep on living and keep on trusting him that God is giving you a required trial and God is going to bring you out. He's just strengthening your faith. A.W. Pink, the... <laughs> See, let me, let me... The English Reformed theologian, the... Calvinist, A.W. Pink, he, he said it well. A.W. Pink said, we live in a mutable world where nothing is stable and where life is full of strange vicissitudes. We cannot and we should not expect things to go smoothly for any length of time. At least while we are sojourning in this land of sin and mortality. Some of y'all don't like that kind of theology. Let me give you the JDG version. We live in a fallen world. And because we live in a fallen world, dumb happens. Because we live in a fallen world, people betray people. Because we live in a fallen world, people lie on people. Because we live in a fallen world, people get sick. Because we live in a fallen world, things happen. I don't want to happen. I don't care how preach past again. I don't care how saved we are. You want to know why bad things happen to good people? Because good people live in a bad world. And because good people live in a bad world, folk going to get divorced. Folk going to cheat. There's going to be adultery. There's going to be fornication. There's going to be cancer. There's going to be sickness. There we can't for a moment think that because I come to church and because I read my Bible and because I've tried to be nice to people that I'm exempt from the required trial. I'm sorry, baby. If you're going to pass this class, you got to go through hell sometime. If you're going to pass this class, you got to trust God in your squeeze moment. If you're going to pass this class. Some of y'all trying to pass the class without going through lab. Can I give you something to shout about? So when stuff happens to you, don't cuss God. Don't put a gun to your temple. Don't walk away. Don't drink yourself to sleep. Don't, when stuff happens to you, make up in your mind, God is up to something. God is just getting me stronger. God is helping me pass the class. God is making my faith stronger. Woo, God. Tell your neighbor, you're going to be fine. He, he, we, yeah, oh, Lord. I think there's a deliverance in this room. 
See, God let Elijah go through it because he knew Mount Carmel was in the horizon. He let him go through it because 450 prophets of Baal were on the horizon. Let me come get you. You ain't seen nothing. God is letting you go through what you're going through because he got a great battle in store for you that he's going to give you the victory in. Can I get can I, can we, Are y'all ready to shout? The 450 prophets of Baal that he encounters on Mount Carmel, what they did not know is what he had already been through, Marion, to make him stronger. And I'm speaking prophetically over somebody's life. Your enemies are after you, but they have no idea how strong God has already made you. They had no idea that God was readying me for this. They had no idea that God was strengthening me in this. Tell your neighbor, you can handle this. I have you ever gone through a test and a struggle only to come out stronger than you even knew you were? You were like, dang, I didn't even know I was that strong. It's because of all of the other trials you've been through. Oh God, I feel a deliverance. I said, God is strengthening you for your next victory. God is strengthening you for your next fight. God is strengthening you for your next breakthrough. God is strengthening your faith. Well, there's somebody with a big See, you don't know the fighting folk have done Day by day, week by week And I'm just here to tell you Hang on in there, baby You're stronger than you realize You're better than you realize you this is a required trial. Everybody shout, it's required. This is a required trial. And Z, here's the deal. Here's the deal. Um, um, when you go through your required trial, be careful not to respond like the widow woman. She responded in doubt. Now, I don't want to talk bad about the woman because she's been through a rough spot. But I see some of y'all in her. I, now I feel for her. This is her only son. He evidently is young because the prophet takes her from her arms. So he ain't no teenager because she's holding him. It's her only son, he's a young son, and he is the fulfillment of her hopes and dreams. Because if she is ever going to be all right in society as a widow woman, she's going to require in this cultural context a man to work and provide for her. But this is not just her son dying, this is her hopes dying. Preach Pastor Gale. This is her dreams dying. This is what her aspirations have died. But she responds in doubt of who the prophet is now. Come closer for the language and the conversation. So you came here to remind me of my sins so that my son would die. <laughs> Whoa, hold, 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 hold up, hold up, hold up. Let me check you. That's what I probably would have done, but a lot. Um, Ma'am, when I met you and you were gathering sticks, it was you, not me, that said you're going to make your last cake and you and your son were going to die. So last time I checked, had I not showed up, you would have already been dead. So how you gonna call me out now? And some of y'all just like that. The same person that God blessed you yesterday, you wanna dog them today because of what you going through right now. Y'all, we gotta learn to do better with our short-term memory. I call it short memory syndrome. 
the same person that was there to funeralize your mama the same person that was there when they sang at your wedding the same person that showed up to celebrate your business the same person that showed up to celebrate your baby now cause you going through something new you want to blame them if you didn't doubt them when they were good to you then don't doubt them now When these required trials come, the first thing we do is doubt. But the second thing we do is displayed by the prophet. We don't see it. It is embedded between verses 18 and 19. In verse number 18, this is why I know he a man of God. Because in verse 18, she calls him out in doubt. Verse 19, he don't even respond. Um, just give them to me. You, 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 y'all missing it. She got a hand on her hip pointing in his face. So you want to come here to remind me of my sin? Which would indicate deep down inside she's struggling with the guilt of her past, thinking that God is trying to get even with her, and that's really the reason for her comment. And can I tell you, like I already said, God too busy to try to get even with you. God ain't mad with you because you got a past. Just come to him and be- confess your sin. And he is faithful and just. I would imagine Elijah got to be like, I-, I don't know nothing about what you're talking about. He- There's an emotion. It's- Mental Health Awareness Month, there is an emotion embedded in between verses 18 and 19. Verse 18 is her doubt. You came to bring my sin to my remembrance and kill my son? Verse 19, he says to her, "Uh, give me your son. Now, if I'm Elijah, between her comment in verse 18 And my response in verse 19, I have to be experiencing discouragement. I'm about to set somebody free, even if it's just me. Sometimes God will cause you to put your own discouragement aside and not charge what somebody has said against them and ignore them and go ahead and do the work that God has called you. Has anybody ever cooked dinner but been discouraged? Come on, you ever loved a mate and been discouraged? You ever came to church while you were discouraged? God calls us to do ministry even when I'm discouraged. Because it's discouraging when the same people that were cheering for you are now slandering you you there's gonna be a required trial I'm, I, I can't preach this whole message let me just I got three minutes um, but not only is there a required trial the second thing the text teaches is that there must be a reactive trust I love, everybody say inner faith. I love the inner faith that the prophet shows. See, see, y'all, godly faith is not given to us in order for us to get what we want, but it is given to us in order that we may see what God wants. See, this is, God is, I told you, he's strengthening your faith. See, your faith is getting stronger. Pastor, let me show it to you in the text, y'all. Up until now, Elijah did not have to exercise totally blind faith. Y'all been here for the whole series? <laughs> See, every other miracle, a substance was involved. Every other miracle, he just moved when God said move. Every other miracle, he stayed when God say stay. Every other miracle, he ate when God said eat. Every other miracle, he's been a bystander watching God perform miracles. Now, he don't have a brook. He 
don't have a bird. He don't have a barrel. Y'all. He don't have God telling him what to do. Good Lord. He, he don't have food being dropped on him. All he has is himself. Which means previously, his faith was responding to what God had done. Now God has him in a place where he got to have faith in what God has put in him. And I don't know who I'm preaching to, but you better start having faith in what God has put in you. God has put an anointing in you. He has put a purpose in you. He has put strength in you. He has put power in you. And because God has put something in you, I'm going to be fine. So he looks at the woman and he says, give me the son. Can I release that in this room and all over our community? Thanks be to God for all the mamas that's been holding it down. But God wants to remind us that he needs some godly men that are willing to stand up and say, mama, I appreciate all you've done. Now you give me the child. I appreciate all you have been doing, all your feet. Some of y'all women need to be clapping better than that. Some of us men need to be clapping. We need men that say, give me the son. I appreciate you, mama, but give me the son. He takes the son. And look at her faith now. If this was some of y'all sisters, the boy would die. Because some of us would have followed him upstairs. This man says, give me the boy. He goes up to the upper room where he is staying. The Bible teaches us that the mama has so much faith now, she does not follow after him. She's at the bottom of the step, waiting for a sign. The Bible says the prophet gets up there and he stretches himself out on the boy. And the Bible says he stretched himself out three times on him. Let me, let me go ahead and kill bad theology. This ain't got nothing to do with he stretched himself out one time for God the Father, one for God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. This ain't got nothing to do with Jesus was resurrected on the third day and he stretched himself out three times. It's simply teaching us that I'm going to stretch myself out until something happens. I don't know who I'm talking to, but God is saying you better stretch yourself out until something happens. You better pray until something happens. You better worship until something happens. You better sacrifice until something happens. Do I have anybody in church that's making up in your mind? I refuse to quit. I refuse to stop. I refuse to slow down. I'm going to keep stretching myself out until there's a sign that God has delivered. He says, he says, I got inward faith. Everybody shout, I got inward faith. That something is in me that's going to help this situation. But he doesn't just have inward faith. I'm done. He has upward faith. In the last scenario, he had to look down to see God in the barrel. This situation, he goes up to the upper room to see God. He goes up to the upper room with a dead child. Oh God. I think somebody missed it. He goes up to the upper room with a dead child. He comes down with a living child. Y'all, they, they missed it. Let me try y'all. He goes up with a dead situation. He comes down with a living situation. And God is saying, whatever you got going on in your life, take it up to God. Take it up to heaven. Take it up trusting him. And when you get done the same thing that I took up to him, I'm going to bring down and it's going to be better. 
Anything, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. Anything that you take up to God is going to come down better. Take your child up to God, it's going to come down better. Take your marriage up to God, it's going to come down better. Take your health up to God, it's going to come. Everybody shout, it's going to come down better. God is strengthening your faith. That's all this is about. He is strengthening your faith. The trial is a requirement. You have to react in trust. God, I'm giving it to you. And I don't have time to preach it, but for those of you who want it for your points. And if I go through my required trial with the right kind of trust, what I'm going to end up with, everybody say end up with, what I'm going to end up with is a remarkable triumph. Can I, can I, can I, Tristan, let me release the room. Shana, let me release the room. I'm about to move us from place to place. Most of us have been stuck in obedient faith. Has to help us. I had faith, so I did what God said do. But many of us have had obedient faith, but have never experienced overcoming faith. Obedient faith is she gives him <laughs> to the prophet. Overcoming faith is the prophet gives the boy back to her and says, see, your son lives. I don't know who I'm preaching to, but I'm going to speak this over your house. See, your marriage lives. See, your health lives. See, your situation lives. God wants to move us from just obedient faith to overcoming faith because anything that I am willing to place in God's hands will always be better when it's returned God is just strengthening your faith you're not gonna lose it he's strengthening your faith you don't see it and it doesn't feel good Miss Barbara when you're going through it when, when you're standing at the casket this is what you got to think to yourself God is strengthening my faith I, I'm going to need this moment for the bigger battle I'm going to need this experience for the larger victory he's not done with you He's not punishing you. He's giving you the needed victory for what's next. He is making our faith stronger. Clap your hands and say amen if you know he's making your faith stronger. He's making my faith stronger. That's what he's doing.